final part of Ho'oponopono. So that was my really bad Irish accent. <laughs> ah, Ho'oponopono is a method of personal purification, relationships and partnerships. We are all spirits of God's spirit. We are God's children and as brothers and sisters, we have inherited a paradise. Our natural task is to maintain this paradise of earth. Just as we have received the perfect gift of our bodies, so we live on earth without needing to add anything to what has been given us. None of us has made the water the air on the earth, yet somehow it is hard for us to live and work together. As long as you live on your own, you can believe yourself to be a very social person sociable person as a matter of fact I always thought I was completely okay however not every one of my female partners shared this opinion in a partnership or workplace wherever people are close to one another everyone very quickly notices a person's kinks everyone sees it except the person in question toothpaste comes out of a toothpaste tube when it is squeezed and in the same way whatever is sticking sticking inside a person Sticking inside a person, that's an interesting sentence, emerges as soon as he meets a relationship challenge, whether it's in a marriage or in a human being. One of our missions in life is learning to work together for the welfare of humanity, animals, plants, and rocks. A ho pono pono exercise. So if you have difficulties with someone, you should bless him or her and repeat again, again in spirit. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you really important there if you are having difficulties with someone you should bless him or her and repeat again and again in spirit the whole pono pono i'm sorry please forgive me i love you thank you remember this every situation hides a learning opportunity make a list of every person animal and plant in which you have wanted to live in purity then in your thinking make a whole pono pono for each one God sleeps in the rocks, dreams in the plants, awakens in the animals and acts in the human beings. The guy in The Secret said that, the younger-ish man, and I remember he couldn't remember it properly. <laughs> Perhaps you live or used to live in an unhappy partnership or you have just ended a relationship and still carry within you the hurts that must be healed. As long as we think of a relationship with resentment, hatred, sadness, or disappointment, we will attract a similar relationship through the resonance principle or generally block ourselves off from a new harmonious and loving relationship. If you do not heal the wounds from old partnerships, it is very probable that the same wounds renewed will be inflicted on you again. Anger, hatred, and bitterness are strong emotions that attract their targets with precision. A ho pono pono exercise. Please forgive yourself for having lived a good a relationship that did you no good. The good that comes of it is that you now know better. You are thus a winner. Release yourself energetically from your old relationship. Forgive your partnership partner and free yourself. Oh, I'm trying to read too fast and I'm making mistakes. Anyway, I'll slow down. Forgive yourself unconditionally and say goodbye to all feelings of guilt. Health. Jesus of Nazareth is counted as the greatest healer in the biblical history of the world. He healed the blind, the lame, the spiritually benighted and others too. But stop. In the biblical stories, he always emphasized that he did not heal the people but their beliefs. We are healthy and healed in every moment when we recognize our perfection and complete the paradigm change that can either happen simultaneously or it must be practiced. For example, through affirmations, seeing ourselves as healthy and powerful rather than needy and incomplete. In a Hawaiian temple, every physical healing is preceded by a ho'oponopono. The reason being that the spirit must be healed before the body can be. For it is in our consciousness that controls our material parts. We know from quantum physics that consciousness is the decisive factor in creating a reality out of the cloud of possibilities. Another of world's history's doc great doctors, Hippocrates, wrote on this same theme. 
There are no unhealable illnesses, only unhealable people. To be healed means to be complete because when we are sick, we are lacking in something, but it is not health we lack, but belief and trust in our perfection. Perhaps we lack trust because we have not had the experience of perfection. A person who has never had an asthma attack experiences himself differently to someone who would like to get rid of their asthma under any circumstances. Gesundheit, I hope I said that correctly, the German word for health contains the concept Sund, which is Scandinavian, refers to a strait, a passage of water connecting two seas or other larger bodies of water. Sund is also contained in the English word sunder, meaning to split apart. The path to health can therefore be understood as overcoming the gulf that has divided us from our divine perfection. And Ho'oponopono shows us how to swim. While we were practicing the relinquishment of negative destructive thoughts, words and deeds, we are re-entering into unity and divine harmony. After Louise Hay, the author in the positive thinking realm, discovered the connection between spiritual and physical dispositions, she published the classic Heal Your Body in 1976. <sighs> A few years later, her knowledge was put to the ultimate test. She got cancer. In an interview for her film, You Can Heal Your Life, the movie, she reported how her cancer had been healed by a thorough process of physical and spiritual detoxification. She was challenged by all the traumatic experiences of her childhood and she passed the test by releasing and forgiving everyone who had participated in them. Her therapeutic work, she came to realize that her illness and the majority of her clients' illnesses and problems disappeared as soon as she and the client began to accept themselves, forgive themselves and love themselves. I love you, I love myself, I love you means I love myself. The subconscious makes no distinction between the inner and the outer. If a person does not forgive himself for past mistakes and believes he is guilty, he will become ill. In the end, he has to suffer and be punished for his mistakes. It's quite simple. If you continually scold yourself for something, you program, you program your subconscious to destroy you. You will then either eat too much or too little, sleep too much or too little, perhaps work yourself to death or begin wanting to please everyone. If we punish and scold ourselves unconsciously, it can happen that our defective self-consciousness not only weakens our immune system, but it overdraws on our bank account. Then finally, anyone who is worthless has no money and deserves no reward. Professional vocation and compensation. Each of us possesses unique capabilities. These talents are our unique contribution to the well-being of the whole. Each person bears within him a valuable treasure, his individual vocation. Vocation means that there is a calling within each of us, a purpose. When we follow, the, follow this calling, everything goes well. We are in tune with ourselves and with life. Our life now follows a plan that is bigger than we are. Please imagine the following situation. You are lying on your deathbed and your capabilities come in and one after another they ask you, why have you not done more to develop them? Finally, your dream enters. The dream that you have always had and the dream asks, why have you not lived me? I have spoken to you every day. What will you say to that reply? A ho ponopono exercise. If you still do not know your vocation, perhaps are unemployed or have a job that destroys you physically and spiritually, forgive yourself at once. Make a ho ponopono. Trust yourself and go through the four steps. Pass from the shadow to the light. Love and accept yourself unconditionally, whatever your present situation. Then vigorously direct all your attention to the solution. Incoming letters tell of problems in the workplace, in finances, partnership and health. Especially in the workplace, we are confronted now and then by aggressive contemporaries. We might experience irrational decisions and we must do things that run completely contrary to our own value systems. Money is the expression of the value of our performance, our payment. A friend, for example, wants a atypically large honorarium for his work at a 
as a gardener because I love myself. As he once said to me smiling, he always does a good job, which is natural for people who love themselves and value their work. So now begin to value yourself and raise your worth. A person's bank balance is an expression amongst others of self-image, the image that which we have of ourselves. If the credit side of your bank account is constantly rising and falling, then you should ask yourself quite simply whether something parallel is happening within you. Search your heart for the reason and then forgive yourself. In a study in 2008 by Carnegie Mellon University called Why Play a Losing Game, lead author Emily Hasley explored why people on low incomes play the lottery. The study found that in a short period of time after winning, the vast majority of American lottery millionaires were financially back where they were before they got their winnings, most even broke and in debt. Can it be that our reality is the direct result of our conditioning? Thought pattern and type of relationship? Apparently the cause lies in the spiritual and the effect in the material realms. So there's a, another two pages, the worldwide political challenge. If someone in the family has a problem, then everyone has a problem. And exactly the same problem is true on the national European and global planes. It's not only through the internet that the world is being brought together, but also through modern modes of transport that allows us to reach every point of the Earth's surface in our ever shorter space of time. We see ourselves faced by great challenges, genocide, religious wars, energy crisis, bank crisis and corruption, unending streams of blood flowing from slaughterhouses, poverty and worldwide starvation, environmental catastrophes. Add, last but not least, for the last 50 years, humankind has been producing something in such large quantities that it threatens to choke us. Rubbish. What can an individual... What, what can we do? What can you and I do? How can we emerge from the fog of an apathetic powerlessness and self-sacrificing acquiescence? The attitude that says, in any case, there's nothing I can do. I am part of the world. When I change myself, the world changes too. When you and I begin to understand that faith and trust, words and feelings, the quantum laws, love and forgiveness can achieve, we possess a powerful tool to move world events in a positive direction. Do you know about holograms? A hologram is an image with a special property. If you cut it into pieces and look at one of the new and the very small pieces through a magnifying glass, you will see always the same image on each fragment, stated metaphysically, as is the great, so in the small. The macrocosm in the microcosm. Our universe is such a hologram, we live in a hologram. Yes, yes, yes. Just like everyone is you pushed out, they are your hologram. Same thing. You and I are parts of this universe. We are parts and images of God. This means that the universe and God also acts through us. Take a step in the direction of making right right and the whole universe makes a leap towards harmony and peace that bestows power and responsibility on every individual. We can each begin with ourselves. If something disturbs you, if you would like to improve something or bring something on this planet into harmony, please put the following four questions to yourself. Number one, who has the problem? Number two, who is the problem? Number three, who has the power? Number four, who has the responsibility? Please make a ho'oponopono to all the questions and unconditionally forgive yourself and everyone who has any way participated. After you've moved yourself and therefore the planet too back from self-destruction to a place of love, make the paradigm change and look for new possibilities. Ask yourself this, if there were something I could do whereby I could be a part of the solution, what would it be? Simply direct your attention away from the problem and fix it on the solution. Which fits in with Neville's, don't think of it, live from it. These bits fit together, Neville's work. Everyone's you pushed out, everything is you pushed out, and Ho'oponopono. That's why I'm reading this to you, because it fits together. <sighs> Last little bit. We are all traveling on a mutual journey. Heal yourself and you heal the world. Thank you. Now, the little, little bit from Ulrich Dupree, he says... Aloha dear readers, this is the end of the book. I hope that by reading my little book you've gained some valuable knowledge and you're ready for your next personal steps. Perhaps you have become aware of things in your life that you want to alter or further develop. 
With my whole heart, I wish you success in these endeavors. You will find further information on the website, ho'oponoponopono, ho'oponoponopono. I'll put the website down below. It's just ho'oponoponoeasy.com. My special thanks to the Hawaiian people for the tradition of Ho'oponopono and the great world service that is joined to it. Sincerely, Ulrich E. Dupree. Thank you, Ulrich. So that's it. That brings us to the end of the Ho'oponopono. I hope that as you have gone through or if you've gone through it once, you go back and do the little exercises that he suggests because it is about clearing you and the more you clear stuff, the more the outside changes, the better you feel and then you can manifest better what you want. Okay, lots of love and saying sayonara to the end of this series.